All right, on to our last macromolecule. So far we've talked about carbohydrates, we've talked about lipids, and we've talked about proteins. Now we're going to talk about nucleic acids, which is a really important type of macromolecule that we will talk in pretty extensive depth um, when we talk about DNA replication and genetics and protein synthesis. So consider this kind of like your introduction to nucleic acids, but they're really important. Um, and the reason why they're so important is because they store and they transmit genetic information, right? And so transmit just means pass along, right? So from a mother to a child, right, genetic information is transmitted, it's passed in the form of DNA, right? <clears throat> and in biology, we have this, this central dogma, this idea um, of gene expression, and it kind of governs the ideas that we have about how cells work and about how information is passed from generation to generation. And it's this idea that you, there's a lot of evidence to support, of course, that if you have DNA, the DNA can be turned into another form called RNA, and that RNA is then used to make protein. So in order to make proteins, you need to have DNA, right? Which then needs to be turned into RNA, or used to make, I should say, not turned into. Uh, DNA is used to make RNA, which is then used to make proteins. And as we just learned, proteins are really important for everything, right? And so what's in that DNA is the instructions for making those proteins. And we will learn about that ad nauseum, okay? But let's talk about the different types of nucleic acids that exist, right? So you've heard about these nucleic acids in your biology classes before. Um, there are two types of nucleic acids. There's deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, and there's ribonucleic acid, RNA. Almost the same thing, except this one has a deoxy at the beginning. Uh, it turns out that they are really similar in a lot of ways, right? But they have different functions, actually very different functions, right? So DNA um, provides the directions for its own replication, right? So if DNA wants to make a copy, of itself if it wants to replicate it needs to have DNA to start with. Makes sense, right? DNA also gives instructions for RNA synthesis, right? So if you want to make RNA you need to start with DNA because you'll remember it goes from DNA is used to make RNA is used to make then proteins, right? And so the main function of RNA then is instructions for protein synthesis or for protein making, okay? So those are the important roles of nucleic acids. And that might say, seem like it's not a lot, but it's actually pretty much everything about life. So um, let's look at a diagram that you guys had in your reading. So in a cell, there's a part of the cell that the DNA is stored in, which is the nucleus. Yes, correct. Right. So inside of the nucleus, we have our DNA, or we should unless there's a problem in the cell, I guess. The DNA um, is stored in the nucleus and it stays in the nucleus. Um, the RNA, and there's a couple of different types of RNA, but we'll just say RNA for now, is a copy of the DNA. It's just like a copy of half of the DNA actually, right? And the RNA then actually leaves the, the nucleus from where it was copied and it connects with a particular organelle called a ribosome, which then takes amino acids that are um, in the cytoplasm or in like the, the juice of the cell and it starts forming these polypeptide chains which then you know will form eventually a protein, okay? Uh, so that is kind of like the overview of the process of protein synthesis, right? So taking DNA, turning, uh, making RNA from that and then using that RNA to make a polypeptide chain. Pretty cool. So let's take a look at the structure of a nucleic acid, right? So a nucleic acid is definitely a polymer, right? So it's made up of monomers. And in the case of nucleic acid, it's not amino acids, it's not monosaccharides, it's actually nucleotides. Nucleotides are the pieces that make up our nucleic acids. And there are five different nucleotides. Um, four of which are found in DNA, and there's one special one that's found only in RNA, right? But these nucleotides come together, just like I always have been showing, in a kind of a re repetitive way, and they form our macromolecule, which in this case is our nucleic acid. Nucleotides have a special uh, 
structure to them. They're always made out of three things. They are made out of a nitrogenous base, they have a pentose sugar, and they have a phosphate head. Uh, or a phosphate group. And so here we have it, we have our phosphate, we have our sugar, and we have our nitrogenous base. So here we have one nucleotide. Here we have another one, phosphate, sugar, nitrogen, right? And they are connected, but they are two separate nucleotides. So let's look at the different types of nucleotides that we have. Um, so there are nucleotides that have different uh, nitrogenous bases. So all nucleotides will have sugar, they'll have phosphate, and then they have the nitrogenous base. And there are two types of nitrogenous bases. There are nitrogenous bases that are pyrimidines, right? So they have a single carbon ring, and that includes cytosine, thymine, and uracil. And then there's also purines, which is another type of nitrogenous base that's made up of two rings, right? So that's adenine and guanine, okay? And we'll talk more about that later, but just know that there are pyrimidines, single ring, purines, two rings, okay? And if we take a gander at um, the two different types of sugar, right? So we talked about deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid, right? That name is coming from the type of sugar. So a deoxyribo, uh, deoxyribose sugar is a type of sugar that's found in DNA, and then ribose is the type of sugar that's found in RNA. And you'll look at these two, and they look exactly the same, except there's no oxygen on this particular, on the second carbon right there, right? So deoxy, it's missing at oxygen. That's the difference. Kind of amazing. Small differences make a big difference. Small differences in structure make a big difference in function. That's what I was trying to say. Um, <clears throat> if we take a look at the structure of DNA, and this should be a review, you know that it's this kind of double helix structure, right? So it's kind of two, two strands that are wound together in this helix. Uh, and there are different ends to it. There's three prime ends, there's five prime ends, and we'll talk about all of that and why it's important when we talk about DNA replication, okay? Um, but for now, I just want you to know that DNA is a double helix. It has two strands that are wound together into a double helix. The structure of RNA, as you'll remember, is a single strand, right? So you have a single strand of nucleotides that are connected. And what you'll know, or what you should know, is that RNA has cytosine, it has guanine, it has adenine, and it also has uracil. Whereas in the case of DNA, it does not have uracil, it has thymine. Okay? Um, so that is the main difference in terms of the nucleotides between DNA and RNA. DNA has cytosine, um, it has guanine, it has uh, adenine, and it also has thymine. And these are all different types of nitrogenous bases. that make up the nucleotides. So the difference between DNA and RNA in terms of the nitrogenous bases is that DNA has thymine, however, um, RNA has uracil in the place of thymine. Okay, there we go. All right, let's do some practice questions. Uh, so first off, which of the following description best fits the class of molecules known as nucleotides? What are nucleotides made out of? Well, are they a nitrogenous base and a phosphate group? No, you're missing something. Are they a nitrogenous base and a pentose sugar? No, you're missing something. Are they a nitrogenous base, a phosphate group, and a pentose sugar? Yes, but we can go through the rest of these just to, you know, for good measure. Phosphate group adenine or uracil? Nope. Missing the sugar, pentose sugar, purine or pyrimidine? Nope. Uh, missing the phosphate, right? So we always need nitrogen space, phosphate group, and a pentose sugar. Pentose just means five carbon sugar. 
because they're, they all have five carbons on them. And we have one more question that's kind of tricky. Which of the following is not formed by a dehydration reaction, right? So take a moment and try to answer this. Uh, pause the video. Here are my answers, right? Amylose, that is a type of carbohydrate. And that means that it is formed by dehydration reaction. Protein, we know that that's formed by dehydration reaction. DNA, also dehydration reaction. Um, when nucleotides come together during that reaction, water is released. Disaccharides, type of carbohydrate, formed in dehydration reaction. Fatty acids, although you might be thinking, yeah, well, when you have a triglyceride forming, glycer, oops, no D here, glyceride, then yes, that would be dehydration, but for the fatty acid itself, no. So the answer here that is not formed by dehydration reaction is that the fatty acids are not triglyceride, however, would be. Because in a triglyceride, remember, you have your glycerol plus a fatty acid chain, right? Those two coming together is dehydration. The fatty acid forming by itself is not dehydration, okay? So don't get confused by that. I hope that this was useful, and um, that's all for macromolecules for now, but we're going to learn about these in much more depth as we go along.